Hi, I'm Kristen. So today I've got another vlog for you. So this is where I just give you an update of what I've been up to lately. So if you saw my video um, last week, you see I finished my triangle, what I'm calling my triangle madness quilt, which is my kind of triangle quilt without a pattern. Um, and the next quilts that I'm working on are something I'm calling kids choice stash buster quilts. <laughs> Basically, I've been trying to encourage my boys to sew and I think maybe just because, especially the older one, can tell how much I want them to do it. He's using it as a kind of control thing <laughs> and saying no all the time. Um, but they did get excited when I got um, a delivery of like a de-stash of somebody else's fabrics from, I can't remember, eBay or a Facebook group or something. And so they were kind of came into the sewing room and I was unpacking them and they were throwing fabric all over the place and making piles and going, I want this in my quilt and this in my quilt. And um, so I decided I would just make something simple, simple, she says, for both of them <laughs> with um, uh, just large pieces of fabric. So I wasn't going to make sort of fancy blocks or anything like that, but I let them kind of choose a couple of colors each and then pull whatever fabric they wanted, basically. So the older one chose blue and yellow and the younger one chose green and purple and they made some piles and they kind of decided what fabric would go next to which one and then I started piecing and we kind of took it from there. So it's kind of evolved um, over a few sessions of them being in the sewing room and sort of seeing bits of the quilt starting to get bigger. So I'll do probably a whole video about that when they're finished. I've got the two quilt tops done uh, and I've started quilting one and not not the other one. I'm going to wait to show them. So I'm basically going to quilt them both and then bind them both so that there's no like, you know, mine was done first or anything like that. And they're not like toddler size either. These are my classic kind of large throw stroke double size <laughs> so so that they can use them for a longer kind of thing. So uh, so I'll show you a bit more about that probably in a few weeks. So thank you for all of the suggestions for what I should do about the damaged quilts that I told you about the other other video back, the other vlog. Um, so I had one that shrunk in the wash and one that got a bit moldy left outside. So the one that was got a bit moldy, you guys suggested borax, which I don't think they regularly sell in shops here in the UK. I couldn't find it. But I found it on eBay and I bought a small amount. <laughs> amount. I didn't really know how much I needed. Um, and it came in like, you know, in an envelope. So it was like white powder in the mail. It was very, <laughs> very suspect. But anyway, um, so I put that in with the quilts and some white vinegar as well. Uh, the stains did not go though. And they are faint. They are, it's not like they're super noticeable. I just can see that they're there. Um, so I'm hoping those washes have kind of killed anything from growing further, hopefully. Um, and maybe I'll just make peace with the fact that there's some moldy dots on the quilt. Um, the other one, uh, so my learner's quilt, which is the one where I was just making random blocks with the same fabric uh, to learn different techniques and things when I was first learning. Um, it got massively shrunk in the wash. So I'm thinking maybe I didn't wash it at first. Maybe, I don't know. Anyways, um, and you guys suggested that I so like basically soak it and then block it. Um, so I did that. I had my son soak it with a <laughs> hose in the garden. He loved it. And then I kind of stretched it out as much as I could and tried to make it, like it probably wasn't straight to start off with because it was like my first or second quilt or whatever. Um, Anyway, so it started off in its shrunken state. I made a note at 30.75 inches by 44.25 inches. And by the time it was done uh, drying, which took a long time because, <laughs> because it was cotton drill on the top, like a pole, thicker kind of upholstery type fabric on the back and old cotton towels for the batting. Anyway, uh, once it was finished drying, it was 31.5 inches by 45.5 inches. So it's still quite a bit smaller than how it started out, but I guess it looks a little bit less scrunched than when it first got shrunk. So thank you guys for the suggestions. Um, the next thing that uh, I wanna tell you about, that I'm super excited about. So my friend, Emma, writes quilt patterns and she um has also recently come out like this week last week come out with um a pattern for a bag which uses upcycled t-shirts and you guys know i like reusing and upcycling fabrics and things like that and 
I have had on my list of things I want to do um, for quite a while now a t-shirt quilt. Uh, I have a box of my father's old t-shirts and I also have a box of or bag whatever of my kids old pajamas as they sort of size out of them and rip holes in them <laughs> as they do and they are kind of that stretchy t-shirt material as well those kind of pajamas so uh, I'm wanting to make a couple of different probably t-shirt quilts but I'm nervous because those are both sort of sentimental um, items for me and you know I don't want it to go badly so I haven't started on anything like that and so when Emma told me about her pattern and she suggested that I give it a try I was like yeah okay so I can practice on one of my t-shirts or one of my husband's t-shirts not so sentimental um, get used to working with the t-shirts and then uh, and then hopefully after that, I'll have the confidence to try a t-shirt quilt. So um, so I had a chat with Emma. She told me a bit more about the pattern. So I'm going to sort of cut to that right now. And then I will come back and chat to you some more. All right. So I'm here with Emma. I know who you are, but do you want to just introduce yourself quickly? Is that all right? Hi, I'm Emma with dreamitquiltit.com, a, a pattern writing company. Yeah. Cool, cool, cool. And we, we met in a course we were in. But then you were talking to me about this really cool t-shirt bag. I think that's it behind you, isn't it? Right, right. So I'm a quilter at heart. So when I started to think about making a tote bag pattern, uh, that was really scary for me. But I just kept thinking about it and made a few prototypes and finally nailed down the system. So I've got a pattern for it now. <laughs> and that's a t-shirt, right? So what, what made you want to use t-shirts? What was... Right. So I had um, several t-shirts that had just been sitting around in a drawer for years. Either they didn't fit anymore or they never fit right, or I just never wore them for whatever reason. But I couldn't get rid of them because they meant something to it's me. Sentimental. Yeah. Yeah. And I didn't want to put them in the mix of a whole quilt. I wanted to do something special for just a t-shirt. So it. I started to think about repurposing it into a bag. And so I, I I practiced on a few t-shirts I didn't care as much about and, <laughs> and, um, and really came up with this and I'm just really excited about it. It's been a lot of fun and that way I can still use the t-shirt in a different way and it doesn't so end work, up in Have you worked landfill. with t-shirts before or this was like brand new or? I had done a t-shirt quilt before for my stepdaughter, but this was um, the first time I'd ever really made a tote bag at all. <laughs> this was different. Okay, cool, cool. Yeah, I've got, I've got a t-shirt quilt on my bucket list, but I was thinking when you showed me this, that I could sort of practice playing with the t-shirt because the t-shirts I have to use are like my father's and he's passed on. So it's really sentimental. So I don't want to touch them until I know what I'm doing. <laughs> so exactly. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So, so um, to be a this good is, start. I'm sorry. I was just thinking this might be a good place to start practice with some of my own t-shirts before I sort of, yeah, just because I've never worked with t-shirts in a quilt. Right. And the, the, that's what's nice about this pattern is you're using something that means something to you. It's not just stored away in a drawer. You know, I use this for a library tote. You can use it for a laptop bag. Yeah. Any, I've even used it for a diaper bag for my two-year-old. You'll find that it's addicting. You can't make just one. You'll right. make one and be like, oh my gosh, I have to make one for everybody yeah. and with all my t-shirts. Yeah. Use the whole t-shirt. So if, if it's got armpit stains or a yeah. hole in it somewhere, you can work with other parts of the t-shirt. Um, and so I worked out ways that you can customize it to your liking. So I can show you some of the yeah, details yeah, on this yeah. one. So this is a t-shirt from a sabbatical I took to Buenos Aires in okay. Argentina in South America That's in cool. general, but I loved this t-shirt and it just never fit right. And um, so I happen to have this fabric that I love because it kind of continues the hair, the look yeah, of the yeah, hair. Yeah, 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 for sure. Yeah, and so I um, came up with adding the accent fabric onto the straps and uh, this canvas bottom is from a thrift store. I found some canvas scraps at a thrift store. And then on the inside, I used as the lining a, a linen tablecloth that I found in a thrift store as well. <laughs> it's cut up and, um, and I've been able to use that tablecloth in a lot of the different bags. So there's lots of ways that you can upcycle your textiles. Oh, totally. Yeah, yeah. Especially and, for lining and stuff for sure. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and customizing it with your pockets on the inside yeah. and, and different yeah. things that you can do with it. Like there'll so be some t-shirts that are going to look better that way than on a t-shirt, really. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah, that's yeah. exactly right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, 
Yeah. So just what you want to think about with the pattern and making yeah. a bag like this is that you pick a t-shirt um, with a design that kind of can cover the space or that's wider more so than long, like a long, narrow um, Got it. Uh, mm -hmm. design is not going to look as good on the bag and it might make it awkwardly long. But Got it. Got it. I've given three different sizes in the pattern to work oh, with. Right. Okay, so, so you can one customize size. it to really any size adult t-shirt and any size design on the t-shirt. And what's the kind of skill level of the pattern? Like what experience do you need? Right. So I would say it's a confident beginner. Okay. If you have sewn before, you know how to work your sewing machine. This is um, this is time to take your, your beginner pattern and then go on to the next level um, oh. after you've done a little bit of okay, sewing. If that language works for me. That's what I call myself. That's what I've always called myself. <laughs> that's probably what I'll always call myself. <laughs> yeah. And I'm offering it as an online course as well. So if you wanted oh, yeah, to, yeah. to go through the whole bag with me step by step, I've recorded every step along the way. And that's on my website as well. And then I'm also offering some live classes, uh, virtual classes cool. a few times a year. And you can get on my email list and find out about that when I'll be offering those. Yeah, and we'll probably send some info out on whoever's on my, I mean, on my email list. We'll work out how to do that and send them what they need to know. And like, how long would it, roughly, how long would it take someone to make this? Do you know? Oh, great question. I would say three to four hours in one sitting. Wow. Um, okay. So this okay. is a great, like in between quilts project. Yeah. You just yeah, finished yeah. a whole quilt and you just don't feel like starting a whole nother quilt. This is a good little in between thing to work on, um, yeah. to, to have a little bit of variation to what you typically do. Yeah. Just get something done project kind of thing. Just get it done in a <laughs> yeah, weekend. Yeah. 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 Cool, cool, cool. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah. That was the other thing I was going to ask you. Yeah. Is there, is there a, like a type, cause there's different thicknesses and different types of t-shirts does it matter yeah which ones you use so the thickness of the t-shirt I think would be fine because you're going to be backing it whether it's a thin t-shirt or a thick cotton t-shirt you're going to be backing it with a t-shirt stabilizer okay and a fusible fleece so yeah. you're going to have some support on that t-shirt got it okay. um so don't worry about the thickness of the t-shirt but the designs that you want to look for would be something that you know can cover a whole space Big. Yep. You want to have enough seam allowance at the top and on the sides. And I talk about that in the pattern yeah. for yeah. placement. Okay. And if you have a, an emblem on the front, like this one, oh, I've talked funny. about how to add that in there in the inside as a pocket on the oh, inside. Oh, cool, cool, cool. Yeah. Cool, so cool. that's a fun variation of okay. something that you can do. Let me see. I have a, I have an example of that one right here. This one's really cute. My, um, Burt's Burger Bowl bag from a vacation in New Mexico. Oh, cute. So it had a, um, a little yeah. emblem on the front. So it's kind of like when you make that, it's like your own little secret inside the bag. Very cool. Okay, cool. Well, you got me excited because I'm going to, I'm going to try and make one, right? We're going to do that. And then I'll, yeah, I'll report back and show you how it's yes. done. Yeah, yeah. I can't wait to see it. I get so excited when I see what other people have yeah. done with their bag. A few ideas of what to, I have to also look and see if there's any of my husband's, but I've got a few ideas, but I'll maybe wait and see until I've read the pattern. <laughs> like, yeah. Get ahead of myself. And are there like, um, I presume there are, but are there like instructions about, you know, how to cut the t-shirt properly? Absolutely. Yeah, there are okay. diagrams cool. and written instructions. Yeah, I, yeah. I show you three different sizes, depending on the size t-shirt and the design, the size of the design on the t-shirt as to yeah. what size bag that you cut. Cool. And any of the sizes that you make, make a respectable size bag. Cool. So they're, they're all big enough to put like books and planners yeah, and things yeah, like yeah. that in there. No, I've had, I've, I've also had a bag on my list. It's a good, I, like I make, I've made bags, but I've given them all away as gifts. I never keep one for myself. <laughs> so I need to like yeah. just keep something for myself. And if I use one of my t-shirts, I'll want to keep it. So that's a good one. So I'm really excited about that. I think that's really cool. If you want to try the bag with me, the link to the pattern, you can buy it now. It's in the description for this video. If you're on my email list though, um, go and have a look at your email today uh and see if there's something there for you um before you purchase uh, so i'll probably give you an update on how i got on with the bag hopefully later this month um so we'll see how that goes now one of the things that i am thinking i might use i haven't totally decided yet but one of the things i think i might use in my uh version of emma's bag is some upcycled jeans because my latest fabric haul 
is from eBay. So it was a great big box of 25 pairs of kind of ripped old jeans. Uh, these were like men's jeans, so they're quite large. Uh, and they were, the purchase price was three pounds sterling. Um, and the postage was 10 pounds. So that's 13 pounds, uh, which is, I don't know what, it's less than $20 American anyway, I think, um, for quite a lot of denim fabric. And most of it is really quite usable. So I'm excited about that. So I'll definitely have denim quilts in my future, but I might also have some denim in this t-shirt bag that I'm going to make. So that'd be cool. All right. So my whips my works in progress uh so i've got two to update you on today so one is the weight loss quilt so i finally caught up on my blocks i'm making the blocks so i've got four rows prepped i haven't um sort of stitched on the circles but i've put them on with the the fusible and i have them all like in the order of where uh, i tracked so i haven't put those together in the rows yet so maybe next time i'll have an update of like how big the quilt top is now and how it's looking and Yay, I've lost another two pounds. So it's going so slow, guys. <laughs> when I was when I was like doing a big weight loss push like 10, 15 years ago, whenever, um, it went way faster. I used to lose like eight to ten pounds a month regularly, and so I would drop a bunch of weight relatively quickly, you know, within within six months or something like that. Uh and it's not happening like that this time. <laughs> so I mean, I'm proud that it's not gone up at any point. It keeps always going down. It's just going way slower than I thought. So I'm going to keep uh, going at it. Um, I have weeks where I'm doing lots of treadmill and weeks where I'm not. Um, when I started off, I was doing uh, Weight Watchers pretty strictly. Uh, and, and I guess I've kind of let go of that a little bit. So I guess I'm just kind of learning some of the lessons. I've learned some of the lessons from that maybe because maybe I've internalized it. So I probably am eating a little bit less or a little bit more low point or how, whether they're really healthy, just like less dodgy foods, I guess. Um, so that's good. Um, but it's, yeah, it's just not the quick, uh, quick project that I thought it was going to be. Operation Lose Weight is taking me longer than I expected. So um, anyways, I'll keep you updated with that one. The next one that I've been dipping into kind of in between other projects. So like when I finished a quilt, um like a big quilt like the triangle one then i would go and do a couple blocks of the farmer's wife quilt so i did a video about that near the beginning of the year i can't remember um and i've done six more blocks so i'm keeping with the bright colors and i'm just not putting pressure on myself to do loads of them i've accepted i may or may not do all 99 blocks that are in the book now but i'm gonna keep going until i feel like i don't want to anymore and then i'm gonna come up with a layout so, um, yeah, so that's how I'm getting on with that one. Okay, not so much an update, <laughs> a particularly relevant update, but I've had a problem lately that I was going to share with you. Pigeons. So, um, there's lots of pigeons everywhere, lots of places, uh, and on our roof. And we probably need one of those great things to go over the top of the chimney. Um, because I've had two pigeons get stuck down the chimney and end up in my sewing room. Um, so one, I was in here, like on my computer doing stuff, and it just bloop, popped down the chimney <laughs> and was sitting there looking a bit dazed for a while. And we opened the windows and out it flew, and that was fine, <laughs> but a bit strange. Um, the second one, I was not in the room. So I just came in the room to get my backpack to go out and do something with the kids. And there's this pigeon basically right here, right where I am now, facing that way, flapping away, hitting its nose on the window, trying to get out. Um, and so I opened that window to try and get it and it wouldn't move. So then I had to come closer to it and open this one. I was thinking it was going to like flap at me or whatever. <laughs> Anyways, it flew out eventually, closed the windows. And then I found bird poo. Ugh. So it was like on this bench, I cleaned it. Um, and I had a quilt out basted on the floor. And thankfully it didn't go near that because that would have been gross. Anyway, so next time we get someone to do the like annual check on the roof, we're definitely going to get them to put something over the top because I don't know what's wrong with these birds. They keep coming down. Anyway, so that's my, uh, my sewing room bird drama. Um, yeah. 
Last thing that I wanted to tell you about was a quilt made by um, a subscriber, Linda. So she lives in Barrie, Ontario. So if you don't know, I'm Canadian. I'm from Toronto originally. So Barrie's not that far from Toronto. And uh, she used the floral scrap quilt block that I made a video about a month or so ago. And she ran with it. And she has made a wheelchair quilt for her friend. Um, so this is a picture of the quilt top and I think she's done a great job and I'm just so pleased to see that she's seen it on the video and then gone and made something super nice for her friend. So um, I was so excited when Linda sent that in to me. So thanks Linda um, and if any of you have made uh, anything with any of my patterns or uh, videos or tutorials or anything like that, I would love to see it. It makes me super happy. Um, uh, so do just send me an email with that. Um, hello at scrapfabriclove.com is the best place to get me for that. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, if you did, please don't forget to subscribe, hit the bell for notifications and leave me a comment. Let me know what you thought. Um, as always, thank you so much for spending time with me. I really appreciate it. Hopefully see you next time. Bye.